No, it started at Fort Walters, Texas. Fort Walters uh, no longer exists today here in the year 2015. But this was 1967. And it, it was in a town called Mineral Wells, which is about 40 miles west, due west of Fort Worth, and about 80 miles west of Dallas. But, which is, of course, Fort Worth, Dallas, Fort Worth, all one big metroplex now. But back then it wasn't. There was some open ground between. Primary flight school occurred there where you learned in a, in a gasoline reciprocating engine helicopter. And I trained in what's called the OH-23D Hiller. Some of the other guys trained in what's known in the civilian world as a Hughes three Hughes. 300 in the military it was called a t-55 a th-55 and it was built by the hughes tool company in california it depended upon what unit you got into to which one you flew in in my opinion well i know the the hiller it was really a tough helicopter, and it, it had to be because students really banged it around. But it was a very difficult helicopter to fly for various reasons. Um, no governor for the throttle. You had to keep the RPM in the green yourself. And it was very difficult at first to fly. But when you finally got the hang of it, um, as you went through, you were given check rides every so often, and you were expected to pass these rides. And if you didn't, you would get what's called a pink slip. And if you had three pink slips, you were out of flight school, and there was no negotiation about it. And um, I knew some of the guys that happened to, and I felt sorry for them. It was kind of like, gee, guys, thanks for trying. And they're sent off into the infantry trenches. <laughs> Of course, we didn't realize at the time, but we found out later that we were preparing for probably the most dangerous job you could get in Vietnam, and uh, at least certainly one of them. And uh, from there, you, you learned uh, primary maneuvers, advanced maneuvers, flying into the mesas in Texas and in areas that were marked by automobile tires, white, yellow, or red, depending on how small they were or large they were. And from then, when you got graduated from primary flight school, then we went to Fort Rucker, Alabama, for instrument training and uh, jet transition into the UH-1 series Huey helicopter. And... Um, you either went to Fort Rucker, Alabama, or Hunter Stewart, Georgia. And I went to Fort Rucker. And that that was uh, the bulk of, of fly school. We had two, I had 212 hours by the time I got out of fly school, which is a lot of hours for a fly school. And, uh, and I graduated in uh, the fall. 1968 and it took uh, they gave me about a 30 day leave to go home and see my family in Illinois and then I shipped out for Vietnam at the end of September in 1968 <laughs> before we move on to Um, I was ambivalent about it. Um, my mother had gone bankrupt. My father had died in 1960 when I was 13, and I had to go to work to help put food on the table, and she worked her tail off, but there still it was very difficult times. And uh, she remarried 
five years after dad's death at, with the encouragement of all three of us boys she was lonely she was broke and she was going bankrupt she had very few options and the guy that she was married was marrying uh, we seemed to get along with him and he, he he loved her dearly and we thought he would treat her well so and uh, so when I um, was in the service I basically had no home but the service to go back to because that was went through a bankruptcy routine and was gone and then uh, her husband had his own home, but I had no home, so I was I was glad to have a roof over my head. On the other hand, it was difficult to get used to some of the highly structured routine that you're expected to do uh, by the minute every day. And I was more of a freelance guy with my time in the civilian world. So do you feel at this point that you probably were not Stick around once your contract was up? Uh, yeah, I didn't. I made the decision pretty damned early that I probably would not be a career officer because I wanted, I had other things I wanted to do after the service. But there were serious doubts in my mind at this, even at this juncture especially right before I went to Vietnam, whether I was going to live to see that those extra days because they call it a conflict. But I remember watching the news one night on the leave before I went over there, and they, the, they had live footage. The reporter was there of a helicopter, coming in it was a hot landing zone the reporter really didn't want to be there he got caught in there and they shot the chopper down it burned and killed everybody on board and there was just blood and guts everywhere and i remember him saying that it was the vietnam conflict and uh I remember thinking to myself i'd sure as hell hate to see a war if that was a conflict so I had serious doubts about, you know, whether you're even going to make it or not. All of us did, and um, and I questioned the the uh, my decision making process earlier when I had failed to consider apparently for some mystifying reason. Flying combat helicopters in Vietnam probably wouldn't be a very good thing to do from a personal safety standpoint. But uh, but anyway, uh, I made it. <laughs> and, 